Honourable Senators, I rise today to speak on third reading of Bill C-45. Let me begin by saying that I am concerned about the uncharted future into which this legislation leads us. Colleagues, Canada is just not ready to legalize marijuana. The police, the provinces, municipalities, the overburdened health care and justice systems, they are just not ready for a sudden policy shift of this magnitude, rushed under the pressure of a government dead set on meeting an arbitrary deadline for its own political reasons. When Bill C-45 was first proposed, there were many questions to be answered. This bill has been before Parliament for more than a year. Here we are at third reading in the Senate, and then, then there are even more unanswered questions now than when we began our study. How will law enforcement be able to enforce home cultivation laws? When will roadside drug detection machines finally be selected? What are the implications for Canadians at the U.S. border once marijuana is legalized in Canada? How is it going to be handled in Aboriginal communities that don't want any part of it? What about the international anti-drug treaties Canada has signed? At what price will the government set marijuana? Is that low enough to avoid the growth of the black market? The questions are endless. What's disturbing is that the very architects of this legislation can't answer some of these most basic questions at this point in the process. The officials in charge of drafting and implementing this bill can't even explain some of its provisions adequately. I told you in my report stage speech about my experience about asking Department of Justice, Public Safety and Health officials at committee for clarification about the provisions of Section 81E in this bill. This provision is regarding the numbering of the number of budding or flowering plants an individual is prohibited from possessing. The officials could not agree among themselves. The justice official said the clause referred to budding and flowering plants in public, even though the words in public were not present in that clause or in any clause that referred to Section 81E. I pointed this out and asked them to provide further clarification. None was forthcoming. When Senator Manning asked those same justice officials the same question at Social Affairs Committee two months later, he got the still the same erroneous answer they had tried to provide me with two months earlier. This simply isn't good enough, Honourable Senators. Canadians deserve to know with certainty whether or not they will be breaking the criminal law of Canada if they grow one or four or six marijuana plants that are budding or flowering in their homes. It seems like this government has made a drafting error on a basic section of this bill that will impact a large number of Canadians, yet they refuse to admit it. It wasn't even one of the unprecedented 29 amendments the government made to its own legislation through its proxy, Senator Dean. The government has had two and a half years to get this legislation right, Honourable Senators. It concerns me greatly that we are still finding holes in the legislation at this late point in the game. In the past few days, Senators have moved amendments to address some of the problems with Bill C-45. I am relieved to see at least a few measures passed which will tighten up some of the more liberal provisions in this bill. Senator Seidman's proposal to limit branded advertising swag, for example, or Senator Plett's restrictions on social sharing. Yet I can't help feeling that it's not enough. We have an opportunity now to mitigate the damage of marijuana legalization before it becomes law, and I'm afraid we have largely missed it. First, because the Senate voted down a measure to prohibit home cultivation, and secondly, because it voted down the proposals to raise the age limit to 21 years of age for access to marijuana. These two measures would have at least helped to lessen the impact of this legislation on children and young adults, something to which this Trudeau government pays lip service but doesn't bear out in its actions. From the beginning, this government has told Canadians that the whole purpose behind this legislation is to keep marijuana out of the hands of kids. It is illogical that the Trudeau government's legalization scheme will do that. With 18-year-olds able to legally purchase pot, there will be a conduit for marijuana right into high schools. And now, with the social sharing proposal, teens as young as 16 will be able to access marijuana from their friends. Further, as legalization leads to the normalization of marijuana, usage among young people will increase. Honourable Senators, we had an extensive discussion yesterday in this chamber about the mental health repercussions of mar marijuana use, particularly on the developing brains of youth under 25. This remains my primary concern about this bill. 
Since we first began studying this bill in the Senate, it has been patently obvious that mental health concerns about legalization do not similarly preoccupy this Trudeau government. When I asked the Health Minister in the Senate's Committee of the Whole in this very chamber about the significant mental health implications of marijuana legalization, she gave me an almost two-minute answer without once saying the words mental health. That is very telling, honourable senators, and deeply troubling. Medical professionals are overwhelmingly warning against this. We should be heeding their call. The mental health care system in Canada is woefully inadequate right now, yet this government is pushing through the legalization of a psychotropic drug with significant mental health consequences. Especially concerning is the impact this will have on children's mental health services. Currently, only one out of every five children who need mental health services receives them. We can expect youth usage to rise after legalization and with it. The pressures on the youth mental health system will intensify as marijuana becomes normalized and increasingly available to young people. Canada's addictions treatment infrastructure is also not ready to deal with an increase of marijuana addictions stemming from legalization. Psychiatrist and professor Dr. Philip Thibault testified before the Senate Social Affairs Committee, quote, there are treatments for cannabis addictions. Is it available and are people trained across the country in both urban and rural locations? Not at this date. But if you ask me today whether we are ready to deal with cannabis abuse and dependence from a treatment angle, no, we're not ready at this point. There has to be a lot of capacity building and also some research as to what are good treatment options, quote. I do not support the legalization of marijuana. I'm sure that comes as a surprise to no one. But if legalization is to proceed, it should not be in this current form, a bill that prominent defense lawyer Solomon Friedman has referred to as a, quote, hot mess of confusion. Yet it seems this Trudeau government intends to steamroll ahead with this flawed piece of legislation, consequences be damned, to meet his political deadline. In fact, honorable senators, everything about this bill has been dictated by Prime Minister Trudeau's political ambitions. This was obvious right from the start when Bill C-45 was introduced in the House of Commons on the last sitting day immediately before 420 to ensure that the thousands of marijuana smokers who converge on Parliament Hill each year would be happy with the Trudeau government they had voted in. The Trudeau government had just broken their electoral promise only weeks before and they needed to promise their young voters something else to distract from that fallout. Well, I can tell you, honourable senators, the fallout for Canadians from this political decision to legalize marijuana will be enormous. We will not be able to put this genie back in the bottle. For the reasons I have outlined, I will be voting against Bill C-45 at third reading. I ask you to reflect deeply on the repercussions this legislation will have on youth, mental health, and the safety of all Canadians, and I hope that you will join me in voting against it. Thank you.